Hello ladies and gentlemen, Games to here. Today we're doing a guide for Huruk Tortos and Throne of Thunder. A friendly little turtle that he is. And this fight is actually quite easy. Um, in terms of number of attempts, this one actually took fewer than Jikun for us. Um, under 30 attempts to get this fight down on Huruk. So if you're looking for a second or third encounter to try out for your raid, I would recommend this one highly. Uh, the uh, roles really focus mostly on tanks, uh, healers, and your ranged DPS. Those are really the, the ones that have to be the strongest in this encounter. So if you have strong heals and strong tanks, for example, uh, this is a good fight. Or strong heals, strong ranged DPS, strong tanks, strong ranged, whatever it is. Any combination of those um, will help you out a lot in this fight. So as for the difficulty from heroic to normal, uh, there are some tactical changes that need to be made with the addition of one heroic ability, as well as things get ramped up. And so that will somewhat dramatically alter how you handle the encounter. But overall, it's just basically the same as normal, uh, just you know more of everything, as is usually the case. So let's get started with some discussion of the raid composition possibilities, as well as the changes on heroic. So for raid composition, pretty standard stuff. Uh, for tanks, you can use one or two tanks. If you use a one tank method and also directly engage all the bats and the boss with that tank, then you're absolutely going to need a hunter and or a rogue for misdirection or tricks of the trade. Because getting bat aggro on a tank without those tools is very difficult if they can't move out of melee range of Tordos. So if you if you single tank it and kill everything uh, with that one tank with the bats on them, then you'll need some sort of, of misdirect ability. Uh, in addition to that, your solo tank should have very high health. Uh, you want a gem and trinket, all that stuff for stamina, because that tank needs to maintain a health level uh, above 550,000 as much as possible if they're tanking bats. And... Uh, on heroic, this can be very tricky to do. So, really important that they have a high stamina level. Um, for this reason, Death Knights are really good at it. Paladin tanks, perhaps. Uh, whereas something like a Monk tank generally is going to have lower health. So, you just might want to be careful of that. Uh, other than that, you can also use two tanks. And just straight up tank the boss with one and the bats with the other. And that's pretty standard for normal difficulty. Um, but then there's another option, and this is sort of back to a one tank method, except you use a second tank spec monk as your off tank. And that's what we're doing here. In this case, your monk, monk tank does not actually tank the bats. They kite instead. So if you watch, you can see that our monk tank is running around the room, throwing his kegs, which he can do pretty much infinitely, and slowing the bats. And then you just kite around, um, picking up new sets and keeping them in a tight pack. Now, of course, this has advantages and disadvantages. The main advantage is that in terms of survival and healing required, uh, things become a lot easier this way. Uh, if you have a solid monk that can do the kiting, then the bats are, you know, basically negligible. And then your only tank damage is on your Tordos tank. Um, so you don't also you don't need really good tank gear to do this as a monk. So even if you don't have a primary monk tank in your raid, if you have a monk that's capable of specking brewmaster and you know getting their stamina at a decent level, since they're not going to directly take any melee hits, they just need enough health to survive the normal damage on the fight. And if they're good at kiting, then they can handle that role anyway. So it could be a healer or even a DPS monk that specs for this role specifically. Um, as long as you have the solo tank to handle Tordos. So those are your three options pretty much for tanking. And then healing is pretty standard, two or three healers. Uh, I think two is plenty on this fight, especially if you have any solid healing going on. So we're using myself as a monk healer and our Holy Paladin, uh, which is pretty common for us. And we'll talk more about how you manage healing in that later section. But for now, I would recommend two healers, especially 
if you're using the monk kite method for the bats. So the main change on Heroic is the addition of humming crystals, which are located around the outside of the room. You can see one on the top there. And throughout the encounter, when any raid member attacks a humming crystal, uh, he or she will gain a debuff called Crystal Shell. Now this debuff is 60 seconds in duration, and it's kind of a cool mechanic. The way it works is as soon as you apply Crystal Shell to yourself, you will gain the debuff, and this will give you an absorb equal to 15% of your total health. So for me at 500,000 health, I gain an absorb of about 75,000 as soon as I attack it. Now, from that point forward, while Crystal Shell is active, any healing that a player receives will not be applied to their actual health level, but instead the healing will be absorbed by the Crystal Shell effect, increasing the absorbed value of that Crystal Shell up to a maximum of 75% of the player's total health. So, of course, what this means is invariably, once you apply Crystal Shell to yourself, and attack the Humming Crystal, your health level is then locked in place at whatever it was at the time you applied. So if you happen to be at 25% health and you attack a Humming Crystal, you're not gonna be able to get healed above 25% health. You'll remain at that level. So you can receive heals to increase the absorb of Crystal Shell up to 75% of your health, uh, of your total health, but you will not gain any extra healing until Crystal Shell is gone at some point in the fight. And then, without the, the debuff active on you, healing will actually go back to your increasing your health level. So, it's kind of a cool mechanic, and it's necessary to handle some of the damage in this fight, namely Quake Stomp. So let's talk a little bit about how that... So just like normal, uh, Quake Stomp does a lot of physical damage to the entire raid and does a brief stun as well as increases the rockfall frequency for about eight seconds afterward. However, on Heroic, Quake Stomp does 100% of the player's maximum health and physical damage to them. So, obviously, this is the primary reason that the Humming Crystal and Crystal Shell mechanics exist on Heroic. You need to mitigate some of the Quake Stomp damage, as well as other miscellaneous damage throughout the fight, by utilizing Crystal Shell Absorbs. And then if you do that properly, um, you won't take exactly 100% of your health from a Quake Stomp hit and die instantly. So this is really the uh, main focus of applying Crystal Shell Absorbs. You want to get them applied with enough time before Quake Stomp occurs to allow your healers to heal around the raid, uh, increasing the absorb value on Crystal Shell for everyone, as close to or at the maximum capacity before Quake Stomp occurs. And then Quake Stomp will take away, um, potentially, 75% absorb of Crystal Shell if it's maxed, plus another 25% of the player's actual health, leaving them, in theory, at 75% actual health after Quake Stomp occurs. And this is, of course, before any reductions or extra absorbs, mitigations, anything like that. So it offers a, a huge amount of stability uh, to that player's survival. All right, so managing the crystal shell is obviously one of the most important things to practice on this fight. And once you get that down, everything else pretty much falls into place. So the first thing to be aware of is when you should apply crystal shell to yourself, since every individual player uh, must manage that point at which they gain the debuff by attacking a humming crystal. No one else can do it for them. So, as I mentioned before, when you get heals while Crystal Shell's active, it does not actually heal your current health level. It's just applied to the absorb. So, generally speaking, you're going to want to be at or near full health every time you apply Crystal Shell to yourself by attacking a humming crystal. If you're not full health, you're at 50%, say, then there's the potential that miscellaneous damage plus 100% total health from Quick Stomp could kill you because you only get 75% total from the Absorb if it's maxed out. And if you're low health besides that, 
a combination of a couple abilities could um, kill you. So generally speaking, we tried to have our raid members only apply Humming Crystal when they were at or above 90% health. Uh, we felt this was a reasonable level. So players would usually take a Quake Stomp, followed by the eight seconds or so of frequent Rockfall. So leading up to that point, they should have about full health plus a 75% absorb if we were doing everything right. So the Quake Stomp would take away most of their shield, uh, if not all of it. Um, then they would have some extra incoming damage from Rockfall after the Quake Stomp. And once things settled down again, they would then attack a coming crystal and uh, after they were near full health. So after they got healed back up above 90% or so, then they could apply Humming Crystal again. So there right there is a good example. I wait for a while, um, and after I know that I'm full health and I'm not going to get knocked below that anytime soon, I just quickly zap the Humming Crystal, reapply my shell, and now I can slowly heal myself back up before the next Quake Stomp occurs. So that's the basic pattern. And if everyone follows that precisely, uh, things are very easy to really handle. You can just slowly heal everyone up evenly. This is a great way to be efficient about your healing since uh, it's really hard to do overhealing when you're healing people up to full health, and then you're also healing another 75% of their health to build up that crystal shell. Now your healers should be aware that there is a uh, buff that players will gain that indicates when they have the maximum 75% uh, absorb built up. So you might want to add that to your grid or your um, voodoo, whatever your unit frame is for healing. So crystal shell management for tanks uh, is worth mentioning on its own because this is sort of a special scenario. And it's really important that your tanks, uh, especially the Tordos tank, is strong at managing the timing of when he or she applies crystal shell to themselves. So the main thing that that tank, the Tordos tank, will be dealing with is snapping bite and just regular melee hits in addition to miscellaneous damage from Quake Stomp and Rockfall and all that. Uh, but the main attacks, of course, are uh, melee hits every two seconds and snapping bite every eight seconds, I believe it is. So your Tordos tank needs to be really good at reapplying Crystal Shell if they lose it when um, those two abilities are on cooldown. So perhaps shortly after getting a snapping bite, that tank waits to be healed up to full. And then after a melee hit, if that melee hit missed them or they mitigated most of the damage, then he or she quickly attacks the Humming Crystal near them, gets the shield going, and then healers hopefully can build that up to actually keep the absorb going um, from that point forward and not have it instantly removed. So that's the main goal, is to allow your tanks, especially your Tordos tank, to keep that shell active at all times. Uh, so this is a combination, again, of the tank managing the timing properly so that they don't get the absorb when they're at, you know, 50% health or something. And then also your healers focusing on the tank so that uh, that player doesn't dip below uh, losing their crystal shell when they shouldn't be. So the way that we handled this pretty much is we had our paladin tank on Tordos, and he would early on um, time getting that humming crystal attacked after a snapping bite and between melee hits. So he was full health, and he got the absorb, and then the healers were pretty much spending all their time when they weren't healing the raid with efficient raid heals, just directly healing the tank. Or at least I was. And I think we had Beacon from our Holy Paladin on, on that tank as well. So by doing this, most of the fight, we're able to keep the Crystal Shell active on that tank. And then on the few occasions where it drops, uh, perhaps he doesn't have a big enough cooldown for Snapping Bite or Quick Stomp, then again, he just times it to be after Snapping Bite and in between melee hits to reapply. Uh, but keeping those buffs on the tank is vital. And this, of course, goes for the bat tank as well, if you actually are directly tanking bats, um, because otherwise the, the bats will tend to push that player below 550,000 and then start draining life and killing them very rapidly. So be aware of both of those things. 
So for Heroic, the World Turtles um, mechanically act pretty much the same they do on Normal. So you won't have to change much of your strategy to deal with these. However, on Normal, you can often ignore um, you know, these moving around frequently, hitting raid members, all that stuff. Whereas on Heroic, it's a significant amount of damage that you need to deal to them to get them down in time. And you also have to be careful uh, that they don't do extra damage to raid members because you can't really afford to get hit a lot by miscellaneous stuff when Quake Stomp is coming up and you have to get your Crystal Shell active and all that. So the best thing you can do to help yourself deal with World Turtles that we found is to utilize slows, snares, all that stuff. So if you have a hunter uh, placing a frost trap right underneath Tortoise's face where these shells come out, it's going to help you a great deal. If you don't have that, then any other form of AE snare will be useful. Uh, so we have our rogue uh, doing fan of knives to snare. We have our mage uh, who's frost specced, so he's got frost bolt snares. Um, our bounce druid has snare from her fairy fire, or swarm, whatever it's called in the snare version. So anything that you have that can help you slow the mobs uh, when they come out, especially will allow your ranged DPS to focus more on doing actual damage rather than dodging the turtles all the time. Um, but that said, you probably don't want to have your melee DPS worry about the world turtles. It, of course, depends a little bit on your raid composition. Um, but even for a melee heavy raid like we had, uh, where we have three ranged DPS and three melee DPS, uh, we did not need our melee to attack the world turtles. Uh, in this case, our ranged pretty much spent most of their time attacking the world turtles, and our melee did most of the damage to the boss, but that's fine. You know, you do damage wherever it's necessary, and in that case, that's just how it happens. So for the most part, you're going to want your ranged to focus primarily on handling world turtles. You can use these, of course, to debuff the new sets of world turtles as they come out by kicking them just at the right time. So our balance druid was in charge of kicking for Heroic. And you can see she would kick one there through the shells as they're coming out. So in addition to debuffing Tortos for the melee DPS, it also, of course, debuffs the whirls and uh, helps them DPS those down a little bit faster. So again, mechanically, not much different from normal. Uh, it's just you know more important that you manage these, especially slow them. Otherwise, they're going to move really fast do a lot of potential extra damage, and just mostly lose a lot of DPS time for your range that have to dodge them all the time. So uh, that helps a lot. Your, your uh, monk tank that's kiting, if you're using the kite method, can also throw kegs on them, especially as they come out, if he or she has extra time to do that. And that's another good slow that you can do. Or if you're just using a monk tank on Tordos, uh, that's you know a great thing to do to help people out there. So the final thing to really discuss is when you should actually focus on Tordos at the end of the fight. So as you may recall from normal, at about 20% health, Tordos sort of gets enraged and begins to spawn world turtles at a much faster rate than has been you know, happening in the, the fight up to that point, uh, such that world turtles are no longer worth killing. They just keep spawning so rapidly that you're sort of forced into a soft enrage by ignoring them and killing Tordos before the World Turtles uh, just take over the room. So the way that we decided to handle this was after 30% health on Tordos, we would use Bloodlust, all our DPS cooldowns, and the ranged DPS would finish off the existing set of World Turtles. Whatever they happened to be at at the time, we would kill those. And then the next set that would occur, which would be around the 20% mark, uh, we would ignore from that point forward. So all future world turtles are ignored after that 30% set is killed. And this allowed us to finish off Tordos without too much trouble, uh, even though you can see here we have people dying. Um, but still, I mean, it's it's not a lot of damage to do in that period with Bloodlust and all that stuff. So the really focus here is to just ignore the world turtles and burn Tordos down. And, uh, you know... If you just spend most of your time dodging them, as ranged especially, try not to get too close to the melee so they can focus on the boss. 
you shouldn't have much trouble once you get to this point, as long as you've got everyone alive and you've burned up to that point. So, uh, that's really everything. It's uh, not all that complicated, like I said. It's a pretty easy fight for, um, you know, this boss, or this zone, rather. So I would encourage you to check it out. Practice on the crystal shell management. Make sure your tanks, your healers, you know, know what they have to do for that. And your DPS, get it on themselves at appropriate times after quick stomps. And uh, you shouldn't have a whole lot of trouble. So that is the guide for Heroic Tortoise. As always, thanks for watching, and good luck.